Okay, I'm going to do a little video here showing you how to do a lead-in using the Extreme Plasma CNC table. Now, there's, there's multiple ways of doing this. This is just my own version. So the first thing I want to show you is this jig which I've made. <clears throat> this jig sits in the bottom left-hand corner of the table. It doesn't bolt down, it just sits in tight to the corner. And this serves two purposes. The first being to keep the material which we're cutting square to the table and the second point of being it's going to bring it's going to bring it out so we're not cutting too close to the edge so that's the front and that's the back it's not very pretty it doesn't have to be it serves its purpose well so an open fusion and I've created a little sketch here of the jig. It's not accurate at all. It's just to show you the point I'm trying to get to. So, if we go into the top view. So if we go into Mac 3 and we refer all to the home position, it's going to bring the torch to this point. And I know that from this point to this new starting point is... 50 mil this way and 100 mil this way. So it's 50 mil on the X outwards, so it's plus 50, and then it's plus 100 on the Y axis. Now, to get the machine from this point to this point, what I'm going to be doing is creating a piece of G code. And to do that, I'm just going to use Notepad. So we're going to be using three commands here, or very basic stuff. So the first one is going to be G21, sorry not 32, G21. And what this is going to do, it's going to tell the machine that we're working in metric. So if you put G20, oops, pardon me, G20, it would tell, tell the machine that we're working in inches. So we'll put G21, and I'll just type in your metric. The second command, we're going to go M double one P2 and what this does is it tells Porch Height Controller to be off when this function is being executed. So I'll type in your THC off. And the third and most important command is going to be to tell each axis how far to travel. So to, how far to travel from our from the original home point to our new starting point. So to do this, we're, we're going to use this rapid positioning function. So it's GOO, and we want to tell the x-axis to move 50, 50 mil, because we're in metric. So this would be plus 50. But when you're writing G-code, if I go back into Fusion, I've done a little draw a few here so you can see plus and minus but when you're writing the G code on any plus movement you don't have to put the plus in you'd only have to put a, a minus in on the on any minus movement if that makes sense so I go back to here so we want to move it 50 mil to the right so I'm gonna type in 50 and on the Y, we want to move it plus 100 mil. So I'll type in Y100, and that is literally it. And I'll just I'll name that rapid positioning. And the speed of this will be as fast as you've got the feed rate set in Mac 3. So I can go to File, Save As. And I'll save it as edge start command and I'll just put the extension as dot tap and save that. So this now will be recognizable by Mac 3. Now unfortunately in the shop uh, my I did try and film me doing this on the on on the computer which Rob supplied in the shop but 
the quality was terrible, there's a lot of background noise going on with welding and grinding etc. So I've unfortunately had to do it at home. So the next thing, so we know now that, that this piece of G-code is going to move once we've referred all access to our home position, we know that when we load that piece of Juco into Mac 3, it's going to move the torch from here to here, which is our new starting point. So let's go into Sheet Cam next. <clears throat> Again, I don't. Um, this is not a licensed version, but this I think this will be okay try and explain what's going on here so the piece the off cut which I'm going to be doing which I'm going to be testing this on is um, it's actually 10 mil thick plate now this this lead-in technique I only ever use for anything sort of above 13 14 mil unfortunately I don't have any off cuts which are spare in the shop to show you it cutting that thickness so I will be using a, a 10 mil off cut so the width of the off cut is 150 mil and the length, I'm not sure the length, but I'll just put in 150 as well. Origin point is in the bottom left corner. I click OK and I'm going to demonstrate this on a star. Which I whipped up in um, Inkscape. So we'll scale it as is. It's about 120 mil across this way and this way. So we don't want this object aligned tight on these two axes. Axi. So the reason for that is because when our cutter's coming up here and it comes out here and it's going to do that external swoop to come back in, we're going to be off the plate. So we'll come up here, we'll go to move, and I'm going to move it in slightly. I'll probably do. I've not got any tools in here, so I'll have to create a tool. Um, I'll call it plasma. Um, I'll just call it 10 mil, uh, 10 mil plate. Tool number two, that's fine. Curve width 1.5. Put the feed rate at about 600, I think that should be okay. I can always alter it in Mac 3. PS delay 0.5 seconds, that's fine. PS height 3 mil, plunge rate, fine. Cut height, it's not relevant. So we've got the THC control in that. I think that'll do. Um, so we're going to create an operation. So we'll create an operation. We want an outside offset on this part. So we're cutting outside the object um, diameter. Well, outside the object shape then. I'm going to go layer color zero. I'm going to select our 10 mil plate tool. Um, all right, so this is the probably one of the most important parts. So the lead and I'm going to select arc. Now, I'll start off by we'll try a 20 mil lead in and I'll press OK right so this automatically generated lead in start point is not going to work with the jig so we come up to edit start points we can then move this around so if we go back to here although this isn't to scale but I know that this recess which I've cut out, these are 100 mil. So, in theory, you could actually um, you could actually change the uh, the sheet size to uh, leave it 150 on the X, the Y to 100, and you know that your lead-in will have to be anywhere in this area. So to start with, our leading's not long enough, so we'll have to edit that now. Um, go to 40 mil, try that. That's more like it. So what I'm aiming for here really is for the for the arc to initiate 
just just off the sheet. I'm sure there's a better way of doing this, but this seems to work for me by just playing around with the start point. So I could drag that in a fraction more or a fraction out to suit. It literally just needs to be slightly off off the material. That that'll probably do, to be honest. Um, and then we can come up. We could do a preview of how that's going to cut. I know that'll be fine. So, quick tip for you: if you when you um, if you stop that preview, I found in the past that if I or if you start to post process while that is while you're actually in the doing the preview, right? Um, it has a tendency sometimes to offset the part from its origin. Uh, so when you load it in Mac 3, it'll, it'll be all over the shop. So I've learnt now that once you've finished, so never post-process when this when this simulation's running. I always like to go back to select, which completely cancels out that operation. So we can post-process that now. Uh, I've obviously done this already in the shop, so we we'll go over them and we'll see how that worked out. So I've loaded the piece of G code which we created in Notepad, and I've just executed it. Now, if you wanted to, you could actually edit that into your exported file from SheetCam, but I like to get the torch into position and then zero the X and Y. Close that piece of code and then load in your main file.